Hi, I'm Mark English. And this is the third reading for my Confessions of a Paranormal Investigator column. Ouija boards. Okay, so we turn the lights off. Everyone is quiet, sort of. And the Ouija board is set up on a small table in the middle of the room. It's trying to communicate with spirit. Now, if they exist, there is presently no technology to actively talk to them. Please don't get me started on ghost boxes. So a lot of people have to use good old-fashioned methods to try and open dialogue with the disembodied folk from beyond. Now, I'm always rather startled at the amount of information people receive during these vigils. On many investigations I've witnessed an astonishing amount of alleged spirit communication and information coming through a ball, glass or crystal such as names, dates, location, how they died, what they did in life, phone numbers, shoe size, hair colour, pin number. I could go on but there's limited space here. So the question here is this, in these occasions are people really contacting the deceased? An obscure hit on a Ouija board could snowball into many supposed hits as it escalates into a full-blown conversation. Yes, you've probably realised by now I'm not a big fan of Ouija, but I'm not taking that away from people who regularly use them. Each to their own, of course, but as far as I can see it, there is too much potential human error involved that dilutes, if any, the results. Using a glass for divination also has the same problem. On a recent investigation I was invited to, a group of friends were huddled round a table ready to see what the glass had in store. During the course of this session we had one of the group's grandmother come through who was protecting a chap in the team from some evil entity. How do they always determine it's evil? There was a couple of people claiming to have mediumship abilities. Everyone seemed to be a medium these days. Saying a spirit fellow was following them around one location. We had to use the usual obligatory questions like push the glass to who you want to talk to. Do you want us to leave? And the classic, do you intend us any harm? in which the alleged spirits happily played ball, of course. What was interesting, though, was on the next vigil in the same location but with another group, the glass didn't move an inch. So there are a couple of things going on here. Either A, when the first group left and after a lot of chat, the spirit became bored and popped off for a brew or something, or B, the first group were not talking to spirit at all, but their own imagination got carried away. Now, if the second group also produced results, then there may be something to go on. But even then, you can't dismiss possibility of subconscious movement of the glass, or even someone, dare I say it, purposely affecting the outcome. So, as you're still limited by our knowledge and execution of communication with the other world, these tried and tested procedures are here to stay for at least the foreseeable future. 